Hello everyone, Physics here. Welcome to another tutorial. In this one we will cover the usage of GPS guided munitions with extended standoff range. Specifically, the GBU-39 small diameter bomb SDB, the AGM-154 joint standoff munition JSAW, and the AGM-158 joint air to surface standoff missile JASM. This tutorial is not intended to be an extensive explanation about these weapons and their associated systems, but I believe that if you follow this tutorial, you will be able to use these weapons effectively. Let's get into it. Preparation All three of these weapons, if used in the pre-mode, require being set up in the 2D map prior to the mission by assigning targets to steer points on the data cartridge. I covered how to perform this setup in my tutorial about JDAM usage in the pre-mode. These weapons can also be used in the Viz mode just like normal JDAMs. I also made a video about that topic as well. I will leave a link to both these videos in the description. GBU-39 SDB The small diameter bomb is a relatively light munition with gliding capabilities. The Viper can carry up to 8 of these bombs, allowing you to hit multiple stationary targets with a high degree of accuracy with its GPS guidance. Let's go over the configuration for the small diameter bombs. Note that some of these configurations will be applicable for these bombs as well as the JSAW and the JASM. Go to air to ground mode. On the SMS page we have the following. The mode you're in, air to ground. The delivery submode, pre, viz, and mission planned pre planned, or MPPRE. Note that the last option, in the current BMS version and according to the manual, is still lacking an appropriate UIDTC feature to support MPPRE waypoint definitions. So we will consider this submode as not implemented for now. The next OSB allows you to check the current inventory in the aircraft of munitions loaded. After we have the control page, we will cover this later. The next OSB shows the currently selected air to ground munition and allows you to select others if others are loaded in the aircraft. Press the next OSB to power on the weapons. Use these two OSBs to select which station you want to release the weapon from. The last OSB is for the impact option. It can be single, side by side, or tandem. If you pick either side by side or tandem, a new option will be available underneath the impact spacing, which can be between 0 feet and 9,000 999 feet. Side by side or tandem as it's displayed will have two munitions release at the same time and they will impact the target separated by the impact spacing that you set. In the case of the SDBs because they have a relatively small warhead I wouldn't recommend selecting these options you'd be better off using individual bombs for individual targets. Let's go over the control page. The first OSB on here is for the attack azimuth. This is the weapon's final attack heading. This is used, for example, if you have to approach a target from the south, but south of the target there is an obstacle which will interfere with the weapon's fly path if it flies directly at the target. With this, you can indicate to the weapon to fly towards the target from a different direction. However, be reasonable of what you ask the weapon to do, because the SDB isn't powered, it only glides. Don't expect it to fly past the target and then do a 180, it isn't capable of that. If you input a value that the weapon considers impossible, you won't see the correct symbology on the HUD, and the weapon will fly directly at the target. For this example, I will input 30 degrees. Finally, range on bearing, or ROB, is the distance that the weapon will cover to set itself up to then strike the target at the attack azimuth you selected. I will select 3 miles. I will now reference the target steer points 
I configured in the 2D map, starting from steer point 99. I know that the weapon can perform the attack azimuth and the range on bearing settings from this position because next to the carrot, inside the range queue, JDAM and zone or JEDIZ is displayed. Unfortunate terminology, I know, the people at Lockheed Martin thought it would be funny putting this in like this. If JIZ wasn't displayed, but the carrot was inside the range queue, it would mean that the weapons would be flying directly to the target. With the correct symbology present on the HUD, press and hold the weapon release button for each target steer point you wish to attack. In this case, I start at steer point 99 and end at steer point 92. AGM-154 JSON The AGM-154 Joint Standoff Weapon is a glide bomb, which combined with the cluster effect on the target and its GPS guidance, makes it a very effective weapon against groups of soft targets. The F-16 can carry up to four of these. The SMS page for this weapon is very similar to the SDB, with one notable exception, the EGEA, or End Game Entry Altitude which can be configured in the control page. The EGEA is the altitude at which the weapon will be at in the end of its ROB run, which we covered earlier. For this example, I will configure an EGEA of 2000 feet. An attack azimuth of 340 degrees and I'll keep the ROB at 4 nautical miles. Because the JSAW variant that we're using has a cluster effect, it can be useful to use tandem or side-by-side -side impact options, depending on the layout of the target area. I will release one pair in side-by-side -side and the other in tandem, with a separation between them of 100 feet. As soon as I see the correct symbology up on the HUD, I press and hold the weapon release button, make sure that both bombs are released, and then switch the impact option, press and hold the weapon release button again. This is important to press and hold to prevent any hung stores or malfunctions. AGM-158 JASM The AGM-158 Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile JASM, is an air-launched, GPS-guided, stealthy cruise missile. Since it has an engine, it has a much longer range than the two other weapons demonstrated earlier. It has a 1,000-pound penetrating warhead, making it ideal against bunkers for taking out runways and other hardened targets. The SMS page is exactly like the one of the SDB, and it can be employed in much like the same way, with the notable difference that you can release it from considerably further away from the target. As you can see, I'm currently 81 miles from my target, 
but I'm already well within range to deploy the Jessen. There we have it. All three of these weapons are excellent choices in highly contested areas. I find that they are relatively simple to use and they are a favorite of mine to use against SAM units. I hope this tutorial was helpful, thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.